The reason Batman dresses as a bat is to prey on the fears and superstitions of criminals. Basically, he wants to be scary. And this fear and myth have in large part come from the legends of vampires. In fact, a lot of people actually believe that Batman is a vampire. I'm not a vampire. Seriously? So bearing this in mind, it's easy to see why writers have had Batman get turned into an actual vampire on several occasions. I mean, let's be honest, who doesn't love the idea of a vampire Batman? And so this video is going to go over every time that Batman has become a vampire. Batman the Brave and the Bold Let's start with a time that's probably the most fun. In this version, Batman is bitten by a supervillain vampire and magically transformed. He then lures the Justice League to the Watchtower so he can feed on them, and one by one he turns them into vampires as well. But not before giving us some great superhero fights and showing off all of his vampiric powers, including being able to turn into rats and turning into a cloud of smoke. Some old school vampire abilities. This show was basically a love letter to the Silver Age, and this episode is a love letter to all the classic vampire films of old, and I highly recommend watching it. Though sadly, in the end of the episode, it's revealed that all of this was an hallucination brought on by the vampire's venom, and so none of it's real. Which is a bit of a cop-out on the writer's part, but the episode is done so well that you can forgive it. Gods and Monsters Now, technically this isn't the Bruce Wayne version of Batman, but it has to be mentioned because when you're talking about a vampire Batman, this is kind of the best example we've had in an animated film. In this alternate universe, Batman is Kirk Langstrom, who you may remember from the Man Bat Serum, and he is transformed into a vampire when he tries to cure a deadly illness that he has with an experimental drug that's based on bat DNA. Again, much like his man bat counterpart. And of course, it mutates him into a vampire with enhanced strength, speed, and power of flight. And he uses all of this to fight crime and so that he can drain these criminals of their blood and stay alive. And yes, that does mean that he kills the criminals after he drains them. This Batman is very different to the one we know in the main DC universe. Now, this film is one of the best DC I've ever made, and it is a must-see, especially for this Batman, who incidentally is played by Michael C. Hall, who of course played Dexter in the show of the same name. And I have to say, that is a genius bit of casting, and he plays the part perfectly. Red Rain Possibly the most famous vampire Batman story there is, is from the comic where he first faced off of Dracula, called Red Rain. Now this is actually a trilogy made of three miniseries, and in the first one, Dracula comes to Gotham looking to turn the citizens into his army of night stalkers and rule Gotham. And during the process of stopping him, Batman is bitten and turned into a vampire by an ally who realises that Batman needs the power of vampires in order to kill Dracula, because she wants Dracula dead as well. And let's face it, if he didn't have this power, Dracula would have killed him easily. In fact, even with the power, it was a close thing. Now, Batman has not become a full vampire, as his ally doesn't drain his blood. They've just bitten him, meaning the Batman could potentially be turned human again. And the series builds up as though he is going to be turned human, but after he kills Dracula, he becomes a permanent creature of the night, as Dracula drains him of his blood during the last fight and fully transforms him into a vampire. And Bruce Wayne is now officially dead and is now a full-time Batman fighting from the shadows. And the comic actually has two sequels that aren't as good as the first, to be honest, though they do see him fight the Joker and finally succumb to a vampire's evil nature and kill the Joker. So he has to be staked for the good of Gotham. But since Batman was only staked and not beheaded, he can be returned to life, or at least undead life, by removing the stake. Because apparently if your head's still attached, you're not officially speaking dead. And this happens in the third story, because without Batman in the city of Gotham, the criminals have gone on a crime spree, and the city desperately needs Batman back to protect it. So they remove the stake and let him come back to get things in order. Unfortunately, Batman goes pretty full-on murder crazy, and kills pretty much everyone in Arkham Asylum, and almost all of his rogues gallery. And in the end, Alfred and Commissioner Gordon have to team up with Two-Face and Killer Croc to stop him, and all of them, including Batman, die at the end of the story. It's a bit of a dark ending, but to be fair, it does kind of fit the entire tone of the comic, so it works quite well. Batman issue 349 Another comic book story of a vampire Batman starts in Batman comic issue 349, and it involves a vampire called Dalla turning Dick Grayson into a vampire. He was dating this woman, but she breaks up with him. So he responds by secretly following her home as Robin, spying on her from a tree, and then breaking into her home which isn't weird or creepy at all. But he is knocked out, tied up, and discovers that Dalla is a vampire, 
which might make it a bit better that he did all this to her, but he didn't know she was a vampire to begin with, so it's still pretty weird. And as Robin attempts to escape, she bites him, beginning his transformation into a vampire. And this gives Dalla a certain amount of control over Robin, and so she uses him to lure Batman away from a party, and another vampire called the Monk attacks him and bites him, and turns him into a vampire as well. Now later on, Dick Grayson goes a bit more feral than Batman has, and tries to drain Vicky Vale of her blood. While she thinks he is trying to kiss her, and is freaked out since she has a lot of history with his stepfather, Bruce Wayne. So she gets out of his way and leaves, very annoyed, and Batman attacks Robin and takes him home to tie him up and basically chill him out. And Batman then teams up with a priest named Father Green, who has a suspiciously large amount of knowledge about vampires. And he tells Batman that the only cure is a complete blood transfusion or a serum made from the vampire who bit them's blood. So they track down the vampires, get the blood and make the serum. Then in Detective Comics 518, they give the serum to both Robin and Batman. And in Batman Gotham Knight, there is a kind of vampire Batman. Some kids are telling stories of their encounters with Batman, and each is very different and very exaggerated. And one of the kids describes him as a living shadow who looks exactly like a vampire. Now, whether he is meant to be a vampire or not is not exactly made clear, but from the way he moves, looks and acts, he is meant to be something like a vampire at the very least. Of course, he is also out during the daytime, which is usually a vampire no-no, but some vampires can come out during the day, so it is still possible. And another kid describes Batman with giant bat wings, and again, he looks just like a vampire, or at least a man-bat. Now, in both of these cases, Batman has not, technically speaking, become a vampire. It's just that the kids are exaggerating what happened when they met Batman and making him out as a vampire-like creature. But in any case, I still felt it deserved a mention. Now, these are all the times that Batman has become a vampire outright, but there are times when he has been turned into a man-bat creature, which means he's half human, half bat. And since that's pretty much the description of what a vampire is, I'm going to go over these times as well because they kind of count, so I feel that they should be mentioned. Now, the most recent time of him becoming a man-bat happened in the Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. And as I have said before, it may sound a little goofy, but it's actually a surprisingly good movie. And after the Joker injects Batman with a ooze and Joker toxin mixture, he transforms into a rampaging man-bat. And he goes around attacking the turtles and the bat family indiscriminately, until the turtles are able to hit him with the cure and return him to normal. Now, this was actually done to him against his will, but in the comic book, just after his son Damian Wayne dies, he goes after Heretic, who murdered his son. And Batman willingly injects himself with the Man Bat Serum and mutates himself so that he has the strength and power needed in order to take down Heretic, because on his own, he's not really much of a match for him. Though after Heretic is dealt with, he later is given a serum to reverse this. But it's not always a serum. In the show Batman the Brave and the Bold, Batman is trying to avenge one of his former martial arts teachers, and in the process is magically transformed into a Man Bat creature. Although to look at him, he looks exactly like a vampire Batman. And it's pretty obvious they've drawn him to be this way, but it is actually possible here that he's not just a man-bat creature, but actually a vampire proper. After all, it is a mystical totem that transforms him, so it would make sense. Of course, it's hard to say as the transformation is never fully explained. And of course, it's later reversed using the same totem that transformed him in the first place. And during the Amazovirus outbreak in Metropolis, Batman is infected with the virus, and like all non-powered humans who are exposed to it, he develops superpowers, and these turn him into a human-bat hybrid. He's not quite transformed to the same degree as his other man-bat transformations, in fact he actually looks more like a modern version of a vampire, but he does get some extra abilities, although he does also become blind. Although with that being said, he can still see, as his body is now producing sound waves, and so he's able to use echolocation to see his surroundings. And he can also focus these sound waves into a powerful sonic attack. And that may sound pretty good on the surface, having all these cool new powers, but they were given to him by a virus, and although it gives you powers, it is still deadly. And it nearly kills Batman until Lex Luthor is able to develop a cure and save him. Though before you think that makes Luthor a hero, he did actually develop the Amazo virus in the first place in a failed attempt to depower Superman. So really, it was pretty much all Luthor's fault in the first place anyway. And there's also the time in an alternate universe that he is transformed into a Batmage. This is a world where magic is rampant and where Batman becomes a sorcerer. Now in this world, Cobblepot, also known as the Penguin, has killed his parents and cursed him, transforming him into a bat-like creature. 
which may just be a man-bat creature who looks like a bat, or it may actually be a vampire. It's never really made clear. In either case, it does still need to be mentioned, but seeing as how it's a world where magic is everywhere, it would kind of make more sense for it to be a vampire. After all, magic is pretty much where vampires all come from in the first place. And finally, in the comic book series Trinity, Batman is banished to another dimension by a sorceress, along with Wonder Woman and Superman. And while there, the three of them become gods. And Batman is transformed into a bat-human hybrid. Now, since he's a god, he's pretty all-powerful and kind of way beyond a vampire. But he still kind of looks like one, so I thought it was worth a mention. And that is every time that Batman has become a vampire. Now, personally, I think the best time is, without a doubt, in Batman the Brave and the Bold. Not only do we get to see him fight the entire Justice League as a vampire and turn them all into vampires, but he also has nearly every power that old-school vampires have ever had. Not just super strength like most modern vampires, but shape-shifting, hypnosis, the ability to fly, transformation, and basically every Dracula-style magical power there is. So if you want to watch a really good time the Batman became a vampire, then start with this, as it's simply the best, at least in my opinion. But which one of these was your personal favourite? And are there any other times that you know of where Batman becomes a vampire? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.